Welcome back to Elden Ring. In this video, we are going through the most powerful mage build you can get early in the game. I did a beginner guide for this before, and after messing around with the game for a long time, watching other videos and stuff, and just basically building up my knowledge of the astrologer class, I have figured out a huge build for an early astrologer. This is insane the amount of damage and stuff you can pull off with this. And just quickly before we get any further into the video, if you're not currently subbed to the channel, make sure you do sub turn notifications on. If you enjoy the video, don't forget to leave a like. All support is greatly appreciated. And if you want to support me further as a creator, then check out the links in the description. And let's get into it. So the very first thing, as you create your character, you're going to select the golden seed as your keepsake. That's going to give you an extra flask. What you then want to do is make your way to Limgrave. So you're going to start in the Cave of Knowledge, the Stranded Graveyard, make your way to the first step. From here, you're going to head north up to Church of Ella. Then after that, you're going to make your way up to Gatefront. You're going to collect your mount. Then what you're going to want to do is head back to Church of Ella. And you are going to see a spirit sat on the wall, interact. You are going to get a spirit calling bell and the Lone Wolf Ashes spirit so that you can summon. When it comes to your stats, the one you want to focus primarily on is intelligence. Get that as high as you possibly can. And then secondary, you want to look at vigor. Don't make it as high. I'm probably going to get mine to 25 and then intelligence up to like 40, maybe even 50 plus. But put as many points as you possibly can into intelligence because it's going to come in so handy. It's going to boost all of your damage and everything. You can put a couple of points into mind, it's nowhere near as important as Vigor and Intelligence though. Dexterity, don't worry about it on this build. And the same goes for every other one. The only reason I've pumped a couple of points into Strength and got it up to 12 is to wield the Morning Star because I did the Dragon Rune Glitch thing. So from Gatefront, what we're going to do is we're going to head southeast and we're going to come past this bridge here. Then you're going to keep going round and you are going to come to the Waypoint Ruin Cellar. You're going to have to take down a pumpkin head boss when you get down there. But if we fast travel over there, I'm going to show you something that you can do to help out with spells in the early game. So you take down the pumpkin head boss and you've got a door there with a vendor in. But we're going to ignore the vendor for now. What we are going to do is we are going to start heading south. Ignore all the enemies if you can. And what we are doing is aiming for that hill over there. Go all the way to the top and you see the structure that stands out is like a building on the left hand side. We're going to make it onto that roof. But what you want to do is come up here and then just jump across. You're going to grab that which is the Royal House Scroll. And then we're going to jump off here. So back to the cellar we go, and then if we open the door, there is a vendor in here, so we're going to do all the talking, and in the list you want to get Carrion Slicer, and you want to grab yourself a Glint Blade Phalanx. So the reason we have picked up Glint Blade Phalanx and Carrion Slicer is because they are way better than just spamming Glintstone Pebble all the time. But now what we're going to do is... From the Waypoint Ruin Cellar, make your way all the way down south. So just follow the main road, go across this bridge, and you're going down into Weeping Peninsula, specifically to Castle Morn Rampart. So as soon as you have spawned in, what you're going to do is jump on your horse, and over to the east, there is going to be a Spirit Spring. So just jump whilst you're on your mount, and we are heading for that tower. So if we come over here, the door is going to be locked off by a spell... You can see there's a massive like blue wall there. So we are going to examine this, seek three wise beasts. And then I'm just going to hit that one directly in front, round to the left hand side. Hiding in a bush, you're going to see another one. It's three tortoises you have to deal with. And then round here in the pond, as soon as you see a splash. Where is it? Okay, it's not splashing. It's lucky I know that from doing this on other characters that, um, yeah, I, I know his location. He's supposed to splash, 
But now the seal is going to be broken. We're going to climb this ladder all the way to the top. When you get to the top, you're going to come outside and around the outside of the tower, go up the stairs. In here, open this and we have a memory stone in here. So with the memory stone, we can now memorize an extra spell. So if we go back to a site of grace, what we're going to do is pop into memorize spell and we are going to get rid of glintstone arc. We are going to put on glintstone phalanx and then we're going to take carry and slicer as well. If you're stuck gathering the runes to buy new spells, you can take out the big guys of the caravans. You can do some of the rune glitches in the game. You can access all of them from the very start or at least most of the good ones. And then just basically farm the enemies, the tougher the enemy, the more runes you'll be awarded, and then you'll be able to get your spells. So the reason we have Glimp Blade Phalanx is because if I annoy this guy, and then if I cast the spell, these swords are going to sit with me, then as soon as I face the enemy, they are going to release and attack. So it's going to be very, very good for aggressive enemies, because whilst you're away from them, it doesn't do anything. It just sits there. And then, as soon as you face them, it attacks them. So you can kind of keep your distance. So Glint Blade of Phalanx is going to be very good for the aggressive enemies. You turn away, you cast a spell, and then you mess them up when you face them. And Carrion Slicer is going to be really, really good for single enemies... Because it's going to attack very quickly. They don't get a chance to attack you. If I get this guy's aggro and cast a spell, there we go. Absolutely no chance. But the thing is with these spells, they are just the very beginning. We've got much better spells coming. So the next step is back to the first step. And when I say the first step, I mean the Site of Grace. So as soon as you spawn in, we're going to head east. And we are going to Dragon Burnt Ruins. So if we don't get attacked on our way down. And there we go. That's how you deal with a group. Got myself a rune arc as well. Very nice. They have absolutely no chance. So, we're now going to open this door, and inside is going to be a chest. We open the chest, and oh no, we got ensnared in a transporter trap. We're being taken away. So, when it transports you through the trap, what we're going to do is run straight away. You can sneak past these, which I'm kind of doing right now. Be careful, because there is... Oh my god, it actually made me jump. There is a sniper. So, drop down, touch Grace. Now what we're going to do is... As soon as we get outside, we'll summon our mount. And what we are doing from here... Is we are going to follow this path... We are in the swamp, but there is a ruins here. Be careful of all the enemies. And over here, I'll show you the map location in a second. We are going to make our way down these stairs. Once you have opened the door, you are going to have a chest in here. You open it up, you search the loot, and you have got rock sling. So, when you spawn in through the transporter thing, it's going to put you here. So, this is Celia Crystal Tunnel. And compared to where you start at the first step, it's over to the northeast. And once you start there, you're just going to come south and follow it round until you get to the ruins. So, if we get back on our mount and out of here, here are the stairs that lead down to get Rock Sling. Head south from there, not west. I went west first for absolutely no reason. And then double jump up here. Jump off your mount. And then come along this wall. Grab yourself the meteorite staff. 
So now, to ditch the astrologer's staff, we're gonna switch it out with the meteorite staff. It's a tiny bit heavier, but if you look at the attribute scaling, it's S tier for the intelligence. Intelligence will improve the damage that this staff deals. But not only that, if you look at the passive effect, it boosts gravity sorcery. Rock Sling is a gravity spell. It only requires six strength and you need 18 intelligence. So as I said at the beginning of the video in the stats bit, make sure you're pumping your points into intelligence. And here we go. So that's one hit, 500 damage. He's already down. And then one more. Ta-da! Rock Sling is powerful as shit. So what we're going to do now is we are going to, from gate front, we are going to head all the way up to the northwest of the map. All the way up to Main Carrier Manor Gate. It's really, really far up. But this is a necessary step to making the most powerful early build. So when you do get to this stage, what you need to do is make your way through here. Okay, apparently we're not allowed to ride our horse. We're going to follow the path around and we're going to find the stairs and we're basically going to work our way up inside this manor. Just ignore all the combat, if possible. Keep making your way up. I'm going to get back on the main path for a minute. Up, up, up we go. And then when we're in here, go all the way up the stairs. And we have ourselves a Sight of Grace. So this is the mana lower level. We need to keep pushing up. And I keep forgetting that I'm not allowed to ride my mount. So again, out the door from the Sight of Grace. Come round here. I really wasn't too far. You can see my runes already. But these guys are going to be so annoying. So quickly grab them. You're going to want to go straight across. Just try and ignore all the combat. And then we go on the elevator straight in front of you. There's going to be a site of grace and that is the mana upper level. You can also grab yourself a golden seed. So I'm just going to do that quickly. Very nice. Working towards extra flasks all the time. So now we carry on following the path. And then you're going to see a big guy and a couple of other enemies. You can attack them if you want to, but I don't recommend it. Come round to the left. Jump across that gap. And up the ladder we go. So keep working your way up. There will be an enemy at the top of the ladder. And when you get to this part, you're going to want to jump over there. And then we are going to try and avoid the attacks. Try and avoid them. Keep running up. Okay, so I think I did it wrong. Because we're supposed to come through the mist. And it's acting as though we already have. But step into the thing in the middle. 
And this is where you're going to want to summon your wolves, providing you don't die. I'm probably going to die. In fact, I'm uh, definitely going to die. So now we're going to traverse the mist. And I'm going to straight away... Please work, please work. Stop going for me. That's it. I now need to use a flask. Don't come for me. I've got wolves out. I grow the wolves. That's it. That fucking health bar. Oh my god. How? Okay, I got incredibly lucky, but I've actually uh, killed her. So, you are going to get Loretta's Great Bow. That's exactly what we came here for. Don't worry about her slash. We wanted her Great Bow. And right here, we can touch Grace. From that side of Grace, what we're going to do is go back to Mana Upper Level. Because now we have a little bit of farming to do. So, from here, where you had the golden tree, try and avoid all the combat. What you are going to do is, we are going to kill the enemies here. We're looking for a specific drop from them. Make sure with the 10,000 runes you get from Loretta, you save them. If not, you are going to have to farm 13,000 runes for a step that's coming up soon. Okay, so I've been farming the same spot for about 45 minutes. Not had a single fucking loot drop. I've used three silver foul foots or whatever you want to call them. I put a point into arcane. Just nothing is working. It is not that I haven't had the right drop. I haven't had a single drop. Besides the first time I took the big guy down. But what you're supposed to get from this location is the Lazuli Glintstone Sword. I've just had absolutely no luck with it. But it scales with intelligence. So for this class, for this build, it'll be fantastic. And I just wish everyone the best of luck. So I did say at one point I couldn't be bothered to farm for the Lazuli Sword that you need. But yeah, I kind of went against my own word, and I would have had this video out a lot sooner if it didn't take so long to farm for it. A lot of farms in the game can prove to be fairly efficient, they don't take too long. However, I've seen a couple of comments from people saying that they are taking a really, really long time, and yeah, overall it took me an hour and 45 minutes to get the Lazuli sword to drop, and that's like non-stop going back and forth. But not only that, I got three drops from the entire time. So it was averaging to around 35 minutes per drop. Them enemies rarely drop anything. But if we take a look at our Lazuli Glintstone Sword, this thing is amazing because it doesn't require a load of strength. You can use it straight off the bat. And not only that, it scales with intelligence. So it's really, really good for this mage build. So this is the arena where we fought Loretta and what we're going to do from here is we're going to rest at the site of Grace quickly just to reset all the aggro. And then on the northwest side we're going to come through this gate and this is a little place known as Three Sisters. So if we come up to this first tower we can get on our mount as well. Instead of going in that building there what we're going to do is... Head down towards the south. So we should get away. There we go. We've jumped in. Be careful. That's a gigantic dragon over there. We're going to head to this tower down here on the southwest. And I'll show you a map location when we do get there. So up inside here, this is called Rani's Rise. And I've triggered... I think I've aggroed the dragon, you know. Okay, it's fine, but as you progress through here, there's going to be a site of grace anyway, so we can reset it. We don't even need to, it's reset. So, this is where you are going to fight Loretta. Come out the back, head down here, and Rani's Rise is right there. So, in here, we make it all the way to the top. We're going to stand on the elevator at the top of those stairs. Then we go all the way around the outside of the tower up to the very, very top. And you are going to see Rani. What we're going to do at this point is we are going to say no particular reason. 
so on and so forth, we are going to serve Rani the Witch. Okay, so once you have accepted to serve Rani, what you're going to need to do is come down back on the elevator and we go down to the first floor again. Then when you get down here, I've already done this part because I was a little bit confused about it, but there's going to be a massive spirit sitting here. Talk to that one. Then as you come down here, because everything's going to be locked off, there'll be one standing here, talk to this one. And then along here, there will be another one standing right here, talk to this one. Once you've spoken to all three, go back upstairs to Rani, talk to Rani, and that is going to open everything up again. So now what we do is head to our beacon, down to this tower. I've somehow managed to aggro the dragon again. And then dropping down, coming up here, we're going to climb this ladder. Again, go up around the outside. And there is a chest. If you open up the chest and grab it, that is another memory stone. That's the entire reason we started the Rani quest. It is a full quest line. It expands the story, so there's no point choosing not to serve Rani. But the only reason we started off that quest is to open up this tower. So what we're going to do now is fast travel a little bit away from the manor. We're going to come down to Northern Lyernia Lake Shore. From here, you are going to want to get yourself onto the same level as all of the water. And keep making your way towards the beacon that I've placed. So it's right here. Just outside the manor, but you have to come this way. You can't reach it from the top because it's at the bottom of the cliff. So as you make your way over here, you're going to be ambushed by a gigantic hand, as you would have just seen. But after you have killed the hand, if you make your way to here, you are going to pick up an Intelligence Knot Crystal Tear. So from Northern Leonia Lake Shore, you come down onto the lake itself. You come up to around this beacon. But what you do is, if I get back to the lake, I'll show you. So from here... Literally just following from northern Leonia Lake Shore onto the lake. Come up to where we are now. And then you're going to head north. And you can go either side of this like little hill thing that the wolves are guarding. Then when you come around the back, you'll see the hands and everything. They're creepy enemies for a game. And then all you do is, up there in the far north corner, that's where you go around, you get ambushed by the gigantic hand, but you grab your crystal tear. Then next on the list, you are going to need 13,000 runes. Because what we're doing is we are heading all the way from the manor, back down the lake to Academy Gate Town. And Lake Facing Cliffs is there, so just keep coming up, you'll see on the map exactly where it is. Then what we're going to do is follow my little path of beacons. So we need to head northeast from here, all the way over, then follow it all the way round to the left, come up here, and there we go. That is our next destination. So we're just approaching our first beacon. If you don't have that sight of grace, I recommend picking it up. It's Eastern Leonia Lake Shore. So when you get to the top, you are going to come across a church. If we grab this Sight of Grace, there's another one you might already have, so it might make things quicker. This one is Church of Vows. So in we go. And on the left-hand side, if I just quickly come over here, you're going to see a big-ass turtle, or tortoise. So what we're going to do is speak to this dude. So the dialogue will cut out. Just talk to him again. And you have about Radagon. You have Blessings Boon as an incantation. Then you have Sorcery. This is where your runes are going. 3,000 for Magic Glint Blade. Then we have 10k runes for Carrion Greatsword. So now, if I can find myself an enemy, or preferably a group, nice little group down here. What we're going to do 
is... Look at the fucking size of this sword. Not only that, the damage is huge. The range is massive, the damage is huge. So it's basically a carrion slicer, but a much bigger range and a lot more damage. Now to have a look at Magic Glint Blade. The range isn't so good with this one. It takes a long time to build it up. But it does a very good amount of damage as well. Now what we are doing is we have come over to Foot of the Four Belfries. We are going to head all the way south until we get to here. So if you have a look, this is southwest-ish of the manor. The manor's all the way up here. We are down here at Foot of the Four Belfries. Just outside the steps to the tower, you are going to touch Grace. This is the converted tower. So what we're going to do here is, if we quickly grab this, we are going to read the message. So it says, Erudition Guide the." So what you need to do to get to the very top, you can just see there's a hole, there's no like elevator that comes up so jump on your mount climb the wall and then come to this part go all the way up to the top when you get up here like magic there is a chest and there's another memory stone so now if we come back down a little bit but if we now go into memorize spell we have five memory slots and there are even more you can get in the game so I'm going to now put Glintstone Pebble back on, just in case I probably won't use it. You can get loads of different spells and stuff. After that, you want to make your way to the round table hold and come all the way through here. On your right hand side, Twin Maiden Husks. Purchase. And I don't actually have the money, the runes on me right now. I'm going to have to go do the ball thing again. I kind of lost them at the church. I didn't think I'd die from that converted tower. However, 3,000 runes, you've got yourself another memory slot. Then, coming back over to very early territory, this is gate front. So what you'll do is follow the path around here across the bridge. Go up north and follow that all the way around until you get to the third church of Marika. And when you get to the church, in front of you, you are going to grab yourself a crimson crystal tear and the flask of wondrous physics. Then coming over here, you can also grab a sacred tier. And if we go back to the site of grace, what we can do is go to flasks, increase amount replenished. There we go. Every time we use a flask, our HP and FP, whichever flask we're using, will be replenished by more. Then moving on to the final part of this, I'm going to say beginner build. You can use this quite far into the game. All you've got to do is just keep leveling things up and it's just going to get better and better and better. But starting off from the first step, you're going to head east all the way through this little lake pond, whatever you want to call it. Come down to this main road here. From here, head down here across the bridge. You can probably fast travel straight back there due to us getting the memory stone from here earlier. Directly from the site of Grace, you want to head just over to the north. And what we are doing is making our way to the very, very top of this cliff here. In fact, it's not that first cliff, it's the second one. But make your way across the bridge. If you want to go the bottom way, there is a spirit spring that will bring you up here, but it's just much easier to come this top way. You can still avoid all the combat. And I believe one of them fell off the cliff because I just got 500 runes. Make your way round to the left-hand side and come up to where this massive tree is. This big dude right here is exactly what we need to take down. So this is the Erd Tree Avatar, and before they've even had an attack, I've wiped out over a third of their health. Enemy failed, and what you are going to get as an award is the Opaline Bubble Tier. You'll also get a Crimson Burst Crystal Tier. 
So what I did was made my way back to gate front, and then if we go into Mix Wondrous Physic, what we are going to do is we are going to use the Intelligence Not Crystal tier, and we are going to use the Opaline Bubble tier. So significantly negates damage received from the Opaline Bubble tier, and temporarily boosts Intelligence from the Intelligence Not Crystal tier. And I don't believe I did it, so... I will show you that at this tree right here is where you take down that Erd Tree avatar. So what this flask is going to do, when we pop it, we have a nice little bubble around us. I believe it lasts for three minutes. It's also going to boost our intelligence, so we deal even more damage. As long as you have the bubble around you, you are going to significantly negate even more damage. There we go, so you can see that I killed two in one slice. Get out of the Flask of Wondrous Physic. So he's going to do a normal hit. And that takes a little bit of my health. Now if I pop this... I took absolutely zero damage from that hit. The only time the damage negation is going to work in your favour is when you have the bubble around you. In terms of our intelligence, I am sitting at 34. You can see that my intelligence is now 44, so it boosts it by 10. One more thing I'd like to do. I'm having so much fun with this build. <laughs> I just I don't want the video to end. I'm going to get out of the great bow. Where's this horse guy? There he is. I'm going to fully charge it up. I am so sorry. <laughs> just, just one tap the poor guy. So what you want to do with this build is basically just have fun, especially at the start of the game, like a few hours in or something. It's going to be so much fun for you to have, especially with the great sword, with the amount of memory slots you've got. But you have a range of different spells at this point. Rock Sling, fantastic for damage. Then you've got the great sword, which has like an AOE effect. It's got massive range on it. Then we've got Glintstone Pebble, I'm still using that, it's, it's quite fun to run. Then we also have Magic Glint Blade, which is, I think it's similar to the Phalanx, but instead of having multiple swords, it's just got one, it deals more damage, and you can like spam it really quick. And then we have the Great Bow, insane range, big damage, you can charge it up for even more damage. So what we're going to do on that note is wrap the video up. Let me know your thoughts and stuff about this build in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video. I hope you guys enjoyed it.